Defensive operations are normally undertaken against a numerically superior ground force, under an adverse air situation, and when the enemy has the general initiative. The defender's operations must seek any opportunity to distract the enemy to allow movement of forces to take maximum advantage of the ground, putting himself in a favorable posture to attack any exposed enemy elements or to reoccupy key terrain. Defensive operations include those which delay the enemy, which defend key terrain to block an enemy advance, and those which involve a force withdrawing under enemy pressure. A delaying battle is normally conducted by a covering force, which trades space for time, while inflicting maximum casualties, and slowing down the enemy's momentum without becoming decisively engaged to allow time for the main force to deploy. It maintains contact with the enemy to cause casualties and damage, gains intelligence on his strengths, axis of advance and intentions, and channels the enemy attack into selected areas. Forces assigned to a delaying task should be armored and mechanized and reinforced with sufficient anti-armor, air defense, and helicopter resources to achieve the mission. The terrain selected for a delaying action should incorporate blocking positions and barriers which will help slow and canalize the enemy, provide good observation and fields of fire, as well as facilitate the disengagement of the delaying force. The delaying battle is fought across the entire width of the forces assigned sector it is initiated by the covering force commander, establishing contact with the enemy using reconnaissance elements. Once these are pushed back, prepared delaying positions are exposed, which contain blocking forces who continually engage the enemy at the greatest effective range with all available direct and indirect fire weapons. These positions force the enemy to deploy and mount quick attacks to clear the way. Before the enemy can close on these positions, the force disengages and falls back. Reconnaissance forces and mobile delaying elements continue to maintain contact with and slow his advancing elements. The process is repeated until the covering force reaches the break clean area where it disengages from the enemy and withdraws across the handover line, passing on the battle to the in-place covering force, usually a screen which continues to maintain contact with the enemy. Throughout the action, screen and highly mobile rear guards are established, withdrawn and re-established, so that continuous contact is maintained with the advancing enemy. The battle concept for the main defense area combines fire and maneuver to destroy the enemy forward of or within boundaries. Fire achieves the maximum effect when delivered from well-sighted, mutually supporting, well-prepared battle positions, which form the anchored framework of the defense. Maneuver allows forces to be shifted from one battle position to a more advantageous one. At a minimum, the defender will attempt to achieve at least a one to three combat power ratio, which should be sufficient to stop the enemy at any given point. The key to success in the defense is the early destruction of enemy tanks. The anti-armor plan is tied in closely with the barrier plan and forms the framework for the defense. It incorporates all of the anti-armor weapons with the exception of the tanks, which will be superimposed or kept in reserve, allowing them to be available when needed for the maneuver battle. Other supporting tactical plans for the defense normally include the intelligence collection plan, which coordinates the gathering of information to meet the commander's requirements. 
the Surveillance and Target Acquisition Plan, which coordinates deployment of surveillance devices, control and illumination requirements, and the flow of information. The Barrier Plan, which details a series of obstacles to canalize or inhibit movement, imposing additional losses in time and resources on the enemy. The Defensive Fire Plan, which includes allocation of targets and artillery resources, deployment areas, plus air and naval gun fire support. The Counter Moves Plan, which deals with a blocking or counter-attack operation on each major approach. The Air Defense Plan, which details deployment of air defense weapons, protection of specific unit areas and locations, rules of engagement, and weapon control orders. The Communications Plan, which outlines trunk, radio, and line requirements, along with SDS schedules and traffic routing diagrams. The High-Level Electronic Warfare Plan, which concentrates on deployment and coverage of intercept, control, and direction finding elements. The Rear Area Security Plan, which includes the location of installations, likely enemy drop and landing zones, and quick reaction forces to counter enemy threats. The various service support plans, which cover maintenance, transport, supply, repair and recovery, medical, prisoners of war, refugees, movement, and traffic control. The attack helicopter plan, which mainly involves preparation of terrain analysis and coordination traces by the Brigade Observation Squadrons. The NBC Defense Plan, which specifies the location and manning of decontamination equipment and reconnaissance teams. A Deception Plan, controlled at the highest level, which allocates resources and coordinates the time and feeding of information to the enemy's information collection system. And a detailed analysis of terrain over which the battle will be fought. The third type of defensive operation, the withdrawal, arises from a lack of success in battle and where the enemy has temporarily gained the initiative. It is conducted by a force in a defensive posture, moving rearward to more secure battle positions. The withdrawal is a complex operation, and the enemy will take advantage of every opportunity to turn it into a rout. A withdrawal from the present position to a new main position is based on elements occupying one or more intermediate positions to delay the enemy while the new main position is prepared. A covering force is deployed immediately behind the present position, enabling it to be abandoned, and then it fights a delaying action back to where it can hand over to troops occupying an intermediate position. When the prescribed delay has been imposed, the troops in the intermediate position are withdrawn through the re-established covering force. The process repeats itself until the entire force is on the new main position. The core defense concept envisages a covering force area with its designated handover line the core main defense area, which is assigned to the divisions, and the core rear area. The defensive battle will be simultaneously fought out to the limits of the commander's area of interest, at or near the FIBA, and in the rear area. The commander will attempt to conduct reconnaissance and surveillance out to the forward edge of his area of interest, and engage the enemy within his area of influence. The covering force area should contain sufficient depth for the covering force to observe, intercept, engage, delay, disorganize, and deceive the enemy before he can attack the main body, and to ensure that a major portion of the enemy's artillery and air defense systems must redeploy before they are committed to an attack against the main defense area. The main defense area 
is the area in which each formation plans to fight its decisive defensive battle. The area extends from the FIBA to the rear boundary of those units or formations comprising its main defensive forces. Delineating the rear of the covering force area and the front of the main defense area is a control line termed the forward edge of the battle area. It is a valuable coordinating mechanism for fire support and maneuver. This line traces the foremost limits of the troops deployed in the main defense area. Behind it, the defensive battle begins in earnest. Where possible, it is based on a recognizable geographic feature, such as a road or river. Based on his estimate of the defense, the division commander divides his assigned area into brigade areas of responsibility. Forward brigades will be sighted to cover main approaches, and areas will then be defined for the division depth forces, its reserve, combat support, and service support elements. Frontages, which units and formations are normally capable of defending, approximate 4 to 10 kilometers for a battle group, 8 to 20 kilometers for a brigade, 16 to 40 kilometers for a division, and 32 to 80 kilometers for a core. Located in the rear area are the bulk of the formation's administrative installations and combat service support units, along with the reserves and some of its artillery and other combat support elements. The core defense concept envisages the battle being fought in three stages. The core covering force action, the main defense battle, and the core counterattack. During the first stage, the core covering force maintains contact with the advancing enemy and fights a delaying battle. The stage ends with the withdrawal of the force across the handover line, which is three to ten kilometers forward of the FIBA. Should a specific amount of time be needed to prepare the main position, this will be stated in the mission of the covering force. However, if the force is required to be effective for subsequent operations, the mission will specify the degree of risk that is to be accepted. The covering force commander employs his elements to maintain surveillance across his entire front. His remaining combat elements will be positioned at successive delaying positions. The amount of delay and destruction will be greatly enhanced if time permits the thorough preparation of obstacles and well dug in positions. The final delaying positions are selected to permit the force to make a clean break before withdrawing in the main defense area. The forward divisions or brigades will normally deploy a screen at the handover line to assist the withdrawal of the core covering force and to maintain contact with and report on the advancing enemy. The disengagement of the core covering force and its rearward passage of lines is a critical operation, especially if a clean break has not been achieved. The rearward passage of lines into the main defense area must be well coordinated and restricted to a few reserved routes. The second stage is the main defense battle, which attempts to destroy the enemy on or in front of the selected major obstacle and to contain and destroy any major penetrations in the main defense area. The battle at the FIBA commences at the handover line and is aimed at defeating the enemy as he attempts to cross the obstacle. Reserved routes or lanes running into the main defense area must be guarded and arrangements made to close them with reserved demolitions or scatterable mines. The obstacle must be kept under surveillance and covered with direct and indirect fire, likely requiring dismounted troops to operate along it or among the enemy on the far side. All hasty assault crossings must be disrupted and recce forces must be prevented from obtaining information on the extent of the obstacle and on the location of defended positions. On arriving at the obstacle, the enemy can be expected to quickly launch his main assault, which will be preceded by heavy artillery and air attacks. Some canalizing and bunching will occur, 
as he fights his way across, presenting good target opportunities for artillery, attack helicopters, and strike aircraft. On or just behind the FIBA, the enemy will be engaged by all arms teams, fighting from prepared battle positions, covering the most likely approaches and selected killing zones. It is unlikely that these forces committed directly to the main battle would be moved. Therefore, they must continue the fight in spite of lost communications or enemy movement. Mobile armored forces would be committed as required in support of the anchored elements or to counter any localized enemy success. As the battle develops, it may be necessary to reinforce battle groups who are occupying positions astride the main enemy axis of advance. Reinforcements can come from the brigade's depth battle group, or preferably from less threatened flanking elements who can move laterally to occupy prepared alternate positions. The resources of the depth brigade will likely be somewhat depleted as they have probably provided the division's reserve force and required demolition guards. The third stage is the deliberate core counterattack launched to destroy contained enemy forces which have penetrated across the FIBA or to restore key terrain lost by forward elements. This action is not started until the enemy penetration is halted and an adequate localized combat ratio can be achieved. If the circumstances preclude success, the counterattack may be turned into a blocking action. Defensive operations will ultimately require considerable flexibility in grouping and command arrangements, as forces under corps, division, and brigade control will likely be committed in the forward battalion sectors. Battles will be fought well forward to hold the chosen ground, and concentrations of troops will necessarily be created and recreated in rapid succession using all available resources. Defensive operations are seldom decisive, and their aim of breaking the enemy attack, destroying his forces, and stopping him from accomplishing his goals will likely reoccur until the enemy's will and capability to fight on are exhausted.